And again, welcome to the Bible Christians of God. Uh, and happy Sabbath to those of you tuning in and viewing on the live video stream and those of you calling in on the teleconference call. Uh, happy Sabbath and it's an honor to be able to, and a blessing and a, 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 so grateful that the Lord allowed me to uh, be in this word at this time. And I gave you all the praise. And today's lesson is part of a series that I'm doing called uh, Praying in Hope, Faith, and Truth series. And it's pretty much covering prayer. And it's a series uh, that I'm starting out with um, this part today. And the lesson is entitled for today as part of this series. Uh, praying to the true God. Praying to the true God. Uh, All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. So I didn't mute the room. But uh, yeah, praying to the true God. You know, in our walk, and you know, you come around a lot of you started. You have a lot of people that are into prayer. You know, you hear people praying and going to this thing about prayer, and they're talking about prayer, and they go and they want to pray with you. But uh, in this series, and in particular today's lesson, we're gonna show you that God doesn't hear everyone's prayer. And everybody ain't praying to God. We're going to find out. That's why I titled this Praying to the True God. We're going to find out who that true God is. But we're going to find out that according to God's word, everybody's prayer is not heard by the God of the creation. And there's a lot in this uh, portion here that I want to break down. So we're going to start out with Isaiah 8 16 because... Some people may be feeling offended. Oh, what you mean God didn't hear my prayer? Well, we're going to see what this lesson showed you because we're going to read, if you regard iniquity, the Lord will not hear you. So you got to be careful about what you regard. And everybody ain't necessarily regarding righteousness, which means God is not hearing everyone's prayer. And you got people running around saying they pray, they're very prayerful, but are they praying to the God of truth? Or the true God. Mm -hmm. So in Isaiah 8 and 16, and we're going to go through and show you how prayer is a form of sacrifice. It's a spiritual sacrifice that you offer up with your mouth and your heart. So Isaiah 8 and 16, I'm going to go here because we need to understand what we're getting into, people. And in order to understand that this is indeed what the Bible says, I want to start here, 8 and uh, 16. Because it tell you, first of all, bind up the testimony, seal the law amongst my disciples. Now, this is Jesus speaking through the prophet Isaiah. And if we go and skip down a little bit better, it tell you how we ought to speak. And this is a very important lesson to understand. So I want to make sure that I'm speaking according to how the Lord, how his word says speak. Because he is the true God. And that's, we got to go by what the true God would have us to say, not what we want in our own passions and our own mind. Say. Now, uh, Isaiah 2, I'm sorry, 8 and 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. So I must speak to the law and the testimony concerning this matter, praying to the true God. Okay? So now let's go to Isaiah uh, 28 and 9. Because remember now, uh, I rather a lot of people love to quote I can sit from the same prophet. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. And upon him the Lord laid all our sins. So this is the same prophet that said what well, we're finna read right now. So if I believe that Jesus, that was talking about Jesus, then I believe this right here. In Isaiah 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now what this means is the title we're dealing with today about praying to the true God is what we're dealing with in our precept. And we're going to search this here a little and there a little. So now, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue, 
when he speak to this people. So this book was not written originally in English. So we're being wit bearing witness that the Lord is speaking to us now in another tongue. Just stare my lips. So I don't need to go and say what it means in Greek or what it means in ancient Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, or some Aramaic of this or Aramaic of that. No, we don't need to do that. The Lord done laid it out and speaking through to us through his word right now. We speak English. This is the stammer lip that we all understand. Okay? We're not speaking French. We're not speaking Russian. We're not speaking Spanish. He's speaking to us in another tongue right now. So with that being said, let's deal with this topic. Because we're going to show you off the top that God doesn't hear everyone's prayer. Uh, I think we got a, a phone that needs to be muted on the, uh, on, the vi on the video call. Please mute your mic on the video call. Please mute your mic. So we're going to go to 1 Peter 3 and 12. And this is the apostle Peter. Who actually walked with the Lord. And let's thank you. And this is what he said in 1 Peter 3 and verse 12. And it reads, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. That's good to understand, y'all. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And notice, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Now notice that. His ears are open unto their prayers. So now we see that it didn't say everybody's prayer because everybody ain't righteous in the sight of God. And notice, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So the next time you ask somebody to pray for you, you need to consider what are they doing? You need to think about that. Are they doing evil or are they doing righteous? Because we just read that his ears, the Lord's ears are open to the prayer of the righteous. Okay? But his face is against them that do evil. And this is in the New Testament, y'all. New Testament. Beyond the cross. Now, let's go to Proverbs 15 and 29. Proverbs 15 and 29. And you got people praying in the name of the Lord. And guess what? They wicked and they evil when they're taking the name of the Lord in vain. And they anger in the Lord. But right here, Proverbs 15 and verse uh, 29. Watch this, y'all. Proverbs 15 and 29. Remember, we read the Lord is against them that do evil, right? Watch this. He said, the Lord is far from the wicked. And we know that. Everybody know that. Or well, he should know that. But he hears the prayer of the righteous. Because God don't hear everybody's prayer. That's new and old. Under the old covenant and the new covenant. So we clearly see that there's a difference between how the Lord feels about wicked people, because we can show you what God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. But he heard the prayer of the righteous. And what is righteousness, y'all? Let's go right quick to Psalms 119 and 172. Let's look at what righteousness is. So you understand if your prayer is being heard or not. So if you ain't dealing with this, uh, the Lord is not hearing your prayer, but we know who he is, and we're going to see that too, y'all. But Psalms 119 and 172, we're going to go here and just read this one verse. It says, For my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. So the righteous are those that deal with the commandments of God. And let's go to Matthew uh, 5 right quick. Matthew 5th chapter. So the wicked don't deal with the commandments of God. The righteous do. And Jesus says something here in Matthew's uh, fifth chapter and verse 
I'm going to go to Matthew 5th chapter and verse 19. Matthew 5 and 19. Notice it says, Whosoever shall therefore break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the, in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven, because the Lord is hearing their prayers. And watch this. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness, which you give from the commandments, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, because there's an appearance of righteousness, and we're going to look at that, that the scribes and the Pharisees had, even today's modern day Pharisees, they have a form of righteousness, but guess what? Is it of the commandments of God? Because the Pharisees wanted to kill the Lord. They were breaking the commandments with they, by their own righteousness. They assumed or were thinking they were right in conspiring against Jesus. So we got to be mindful of what kind of righteousness that the Lord is looking at when it comes to hearing your prayers. So he said, I tell you, except your, your righteousness shall see the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter to the kingdom of him. Now let's go to Isaiah 1 and 10 because the Lord said something about making people making many prayers. People think that's because they're praying God hearing. Hmm. They're not praying to the true God, nor have they received the knowledge and understanding to know that God's face is against them that doeth evil. He's not hearing their prayers. He's not receiving their supplications. But right here, we're going to go to Isaiah 1 and 10. And I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 15. It says, in Isaiah 1 and 10, that's where we at. Isaiah 1 and 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, and give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Now, why would the Lord say that, y'all? Sodom and Gomorrah was burnt up a long time ago, or was it? Think about it. Sodom, that's what homosexuality, look at it, I call it the land we live in now in America, I call it Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? But he said, hear the law of our God. So you Sodom and Gomorrah. But let's get down to verse 15. Let's see what it says here, because there's a lot in here. I don't want to go off into any other tangents that's between verse 11 and 14, because we could go there, but that's going to go into a whole nother precept. Remember, precept upon precept. So the precept, precept changes between 11 and 14, and we don't need to make no change. We're going to stay on who these people are and what they are doing. Verse uh, 15. And when you spread forth your hands. All participants are unmuted. When you spread forth your All hands. participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Uh -oh. I will hide my eyes from you. And when you make many prayers. No, he said, I will not hear. Peter understood that. And Paul, too, we're going to see. And he said, uh, your hands are full of blood. Notice what he said in verse 16. Wash you. Make you clean. Wash you with what? The word of God. That's why he said, I will speak of thy word. I will talk of all thy righteousness for thy commandments are righteousness. So you wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. So you can have your prayers heard by the true God, y'all. Because we just got to reading up there. He said, though you make many prayers, I ain't hearing it. I'm not hearing it. So he said, seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fathers. Plead for the widow. Okay? So now let's go to Psalm 66 and 8. Psalm 66, verse 8. Psalm 66, verse 8. We're going to Psalm 66 and verse 8. Again, this is part of the series, the Prayer and Hope, Faith, and Truth series. And uh, I'm just going through a little bit. There's a lot because you got intercessory prayer. You got praying for others. And we're going to deal a little bit with how to pray. And we're going to show you a couple of little aspects of prayer. But we can't all do it in one setting, y'all. That's why this thing is a series. But in this one, 
It's called praying to the true God. And we realize in the word saying he ain't here. Everybody's praying. So Psalm 66 and verse 8. Psalm 66. And uh, let's sure I get this. Psalm 66. And we're going to start at verse 8. Make sure that's what I want. I'm sorry, 18. Psalm 66 and verse 18. My bad. Psalm 66 and 18. Psalm 66 and 18. Write that down. Say, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So we have to be very careful about our doings and how we conduct ourselves. Because he said here, if I regard iniquity, in my heart, the Lord ain't hearing that. So be mindful of your thoughts and what you regard. If you regard iniquity, the Lord will not hear you, which is equivalent to being wicked. If you regard wickedness, the Lord ain't going to hear you. So we got to be mindful, y'all, sometimes your prayer ain't been answered. It's because you regarding something wicked in your life. You got to be mindful now. That's why we know God doesn't hear everyone's prayer. Because you got a lot of people out there that regard iniquities, but yet they profess that they know God. Let's look at that right quick. Right quick. First Titus, Titus 1 and 16. I showed this to a brother, man. He did, he was like, whoa, yeah. So everybody praying. You got to be mindful. Are they, or you ask somebody to pray for you, do they regard iniquity? Because if they regard iniquity, that prayer coming from them is not being heard. Well, Titus 1 and verse 16. Titus 1 and 16 says, They profess that they know God. So you got a lot of people that profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So you got to be careful about who you ask to pray for you. I thought when I see the way she went down, we was mindful, hey, look, uh, these saints right here, we know they, the Lord going to hear them, okay? We knew the Lord was going to hear the brothers and sisters that we made aware of our situation because we wanted people that we knew the Lord going to hear their prayer, okay? Because they're not walking around professing in their God, but they denied him in works, okay? So with that being said, uh, let's look at the understanding that Doing prayer is also doing a sacrifice. And watch this. Let's go to Proverbs 15 and 8. To show you that when you pray, you are actually offering up a sacrifice to God. Proverbs 15 and 8. Proverbs 15, chapter, verse 8. The Lord put it right here next door to each other. Sacrifice and pray. Proverbs 15 and 8. And it reads, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Now why would the Lord do that? Having, he said the sacrifice of the wicked because they, we read, if you regard iniquity, the Lord ain't going to hear you. So the sacrifice of the wicked is to be evil. Or it is iniquity. But the righteous, he said, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Now watch verse 9. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. So, oh, so that's how you can tell, hey, who's in the way of the Lord? Who's doing the things that the Lord say do such as his Sabbaths, his commandments, who's striving, who's pressing to understand God's word? Who is about this? Because the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that follow after righteousness. And we read what righteousness is. It's the commandments of God. That is our righteousness, which exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, because they wanted to kill the very one that commanded the very commandments that the Lord put on Mount Sinai and that we are to keep to this day. But look, let's go to 1 Kings 18 chapter and look at something right quick, y'all. Because you had a whole, at this time now, when Israel had the identity, when our forefathers knew who they were, and we understood who the heathens were. Watch this, y'all. 
you had Israel, they got to folly. And right here, Elijah, the man of God, was under duress by the prophets of Baal or Baal. First uh, Kings 18 and uh, 21. Watch this, y'all. Because the prophet Elijah had dropped the challenge on the table. And this was during the time when we had our identity. Israel knew who they were. And you knew who all the pagan gods were around you, too. Now they they don't put all the pagan gods up under the name of Jesus. Well, we'll deal with that a little later in this. Got to be a little more careful nowadays, y'all. And it got a lot more intense and a lot more crafty. So right here, verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long? Hold ye between two opinions. If the Lord be God, follow him. Amen. But if Baal, then follow him. And, uh, and the people answered him not a word. Because Israel at this time had fallen out to some foolishness. And we're going to find out that you got a lot of people that's into wickedness and folly. Where you got very few people that's about the righteousness and commandment of God. That righteousness that exceeds that of the Pharisees. Okay? Even the Pharisees of our time. So now, look, verse 22. This said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But the Baal's prophets are 450 men. That's why in times like these, it looks like we only, and I mean the Bible Christian community, only know about four camps. Four or five camps that teach them, uh, teaching this book. Okay, going after this book, y'all, building in this book, compared to how many churches is on uh, tomorrow, child, please. It's like uh, the ratio is like one to a thousand, y'all. We are a drop in the bucket. Even one, one with our biggest Hebrew camp, don't compare to some of those massive rock star crowds that be congregation full of thousands, filling up football stadiums, y'all. Wow. Okay? Our biggest Hebrew camp don't even match up. Okay? So that's what it looked like, y'all. So Elijah said, I even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. That's how you feel when you be out in the street dropping a book, y'all, talking to people. You like, am I the only one that's a prophet of the Lord? You feel like you by yourself. Amen. It looked like that. Yep. Woo! And some people fall, fall on the wheel. I want to be with the crowd. I, I haven't seen it happen, y'all. But notice, and came, some people can't let go of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So, but it, look what he said. He said, I only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. That look like, man, there's so many, they got to be telling the truth. Child, please. Anyway, but look, he said, let them Give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. Now what Elijah is setting up is a prayer challenge. Mm. Yes, he is. He's going to have all 400 of those ball prophets pray to their God and he being alone He's going to pray to the true and living God. That's what's been set up here. A challenge. Mm -hmm. That's why some of these false prophets, they don't want nobody walking in with no book. Because you walking in with the majority, believe it or not. And you're going against the majority. But God, greatest, the book tells you, greatest he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we're going to see that happen right here, y'all. Watch this. All 400 of them prophets are setting it up, y'all. So watch what Elijah said. Verse 24. And call you on the name of your God. See, back then, we had Mithras, uh, 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 Baal, you had Nimrod, you had all these different god pagan names at that time. That Elijah said this. Nowadays, they done conglomerated everything up under Jesus' name, y'all. Okay? So, they were trying to make what they call Chris Lounge. They're trying to put a lot up on the Christ. Man, I'm like, are you serious? That's the latest one, y'all, that I know of. That's the latest one, Chris Lounge. Okay, but look, 
at this time, he told them, look, you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. That's how you got to stand. You got to call on the name of the Lord that you know. Notice. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So it's on, y'all. It's the challenge is on. Okay? The challenge is on. Now watch this, y'all. And Elijah said unto the prophets, Baal, a ball, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many. That's why I asked all them false prophets. I said, look, I ain't got a problem with them. one of y'all. I want y'all to stack y'all doctrine up on this table. I'm going to put this book up on the table. And we're going to see who's going to stand. That's why he said, look, you choose you a bullock for yourselves and one, and one book and, and dress it first, for you are many. Okay? And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they, and they took the bullock, which had given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon. So they sitting up there praying, calling on their God from morning to noon, y'all. And notice, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. So they in there dancing and leaping and hollering because they waiting on that, they pay your God Baal to do something. Making all this busy work, and ain't nothing happening, y'all. But they in there, what it say? They in there doing what? Leaping upon the altar which was made. So now, verse 27. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. Because that's what happens in pagan down worship, y'all. They be in there hollering and screaming. Ah, 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 ah. Yep. Cry aloud. That's the same thing going on out there, y'all. There'd be a crowd that's in, in that jam, and we're going to show you that. We're going to read it in this book. But they won't tell you tomorrow. Anyway, but look, there he said, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he's talking, or he's pursuing, or he is a, in a journey, or preventing, he sleepeth and must be awakened. <laughs> and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner. They can kind of Tone it down a little bit, I think. They just keep the crying aloud part going on, y'all. Okay? After he said, they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer no, any that regard it. So imagine that all that hollering and screaming like they do all day tomorrow, all day long. And then from the morning to night, jam, they kicking it, y'all. Hard. You know how Israel get down, y'all. We ain't changed to this day. We throw down, y'all. And then nothing happened. So they got quiet. Everybody like, let me tell you, we did all that worship and all that praise and all that hollering and screaming and loud, crying aloud, all that praying. And we get no voice. No answer. Then watch what Elijah does. And he said unto all the people, come near to me. Now we finna get it on, y'all. Because watch this. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down, because the pagans want to tear, tear this altar down. Now. They want to tear this stuff down. Oh, man, them brothers in the cult. They don't know what they're talking about. And we read everything we know out this book, y'all. We ain't come with nothing in our own mind. Because this book was here before me, it's here now while I'm here, and it'll be here after me, y'all, because this ain't my word. But I'm telling you everything that's here already, y'all. Nothing new under the sun, y'all. That's why they sat there and cried out like they did. Now the servant of God, even this day, could do the same thing, y'all. Because look what Elijah did right here. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, because that's who God gave the word to us. Saying, Israel shall be thy name. Yes, sir. That's our name, y'all. The name of a nation. That's not the name of a religion. Thought I'd throw that out there on the way to learn it. Notice, verse 32. And with the stones of an altar, and, sorry, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seeds. 
And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. So Elijah's stacking up his table, y'all. Preparing his business before God. His sacrifice, y'all. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evil sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham. That's who you cry out to. That's the true God, y'all. Amen. Like I said, the midst of some brother praying, I'm like, hey, I'm coming out with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, y'all. That's the true God. Okay? He is God. So he said, he, he called on Abraham, sorry, and he cried out and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant that I have done all these things at thy word. This is why he said, we read earlier Psalms, my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments is righteousness. This is the true God. These are the ones that do that, everyone that do that, he hearing your prayers, y'all. And that's why he said, at thy word. So now Elijah sitting, standing there openly praying to God, saying, I am thy servant that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me. That's what happens when you pray, right? You want God to do what? Hear you. Amen. So if you want God to hear you, you got to turn to the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of Israel. He said, hear me, O Lord, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Now notice God's response. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Why? Yeah, God would deal with answer the prayer of those that are righteous. In the midst of standing in front of these 400 prophets, all the people looking like, wow, just imagine that, y'all. And it's coming again. We're going to see that. It's going to come again. And notice, and then when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God, the God. Notice he said, Lord, he is the God. Amen. Notice, the Lord, he is the God. They repeated that. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. Now, we are up on the new covenant, y'all. And the Lord done took this type of judgment to execute and stone people out of our hands. The Lord going to deal with it. How I know that? Let's go to Luke 12 and 38. Watch this, y'all. Luke 12 and 38. Let's look at the Luke 12 and 38. Hold on, Luke 12, or oh, that Matthews. Hold on. Watch this. Hold on. Get the right word. I'm sorry, that's Mark 12 and 38. Mark 12. Mark 12 and verse 38. Watch what Jesus said. And he said unto them, and his doctrine. Beware of the scribes who love to go in long clothing, a little salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a preacher to make long prayers, just like the prophets of Baal. He said, Lord said, well, Beware of these guys. They love to make long prayers. That's how I like to say the, what the prayer, and we die. But he said, Look, they for preachers make long prayers. Notice, these shall receive greater damnation. Oh, you mean to tell me so God I hear everybody's prayer? And these men, these men up here, preachers with these long prayers, they got damnation coming? Mm. 
Think about it. So everybody pray. You got to be careful about who you got praying for you. Because Lord ain't hearing everybody's prayer. And the prayers are sacrificing. And they're making a wicked prayer. Or this is not their prayer. And they're living a wicked life. And they got iniquity in their, in their heart. And they're making these long prayers. The Lord going to give them damnation. And he said, Vichay, we see greater damnation. I'm like, why, Lord? Like the book said, you saying yes, Jesus is saying yesterday, today, and forever. So now let's go and see what's going on, y'all. Because you got people that make gods for you to pray to. Mm. I'm like, really? Yes, they do, y'all. And we're going to Isaiah 44 and 10. You got people making gods. And they spent through the Bible down to that food. That's why I say, uh, who said I was supposed to celebrate Christmas? Where you read that in the Bible? Well, see, that's Christ. Well, I know you're saying Christ is in your heart, but where is that in his word? Amen. Who told me I got to go to church on tomorrow according to his word? Because that, you trying to give me another God? Because I ain't seen Sunday worship sanctified and blessed holy to God. So you are, now who opinion you going to stand with God, let him be Lord, or you going to stand with balls and his prophets and receive damnation? Because they make a long prayers in there tomorrow, y'all. Believe you me. But the Lord said, they, they said we see greater damnation. Now look, we go on to uh, 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 Isaiah 44 and verse 4. <clears throat> Isaiah 44, I'm sorry, verse 10. Isaiah 44 and verse 10. Notice what the prophet said. It said, who have formed a God? Or a molten graven image that is profitable for nothing. A whole lot of people, y'all. They expect you to bow down and fall down for that image of Cecil Begora and call it Jesus. I'm going to go clean in on you. They expect you to fall down in front of that image. That ain't God, y'all. Because you got goats here. The Lord got the one I read in this Bible. His hair is like wool. Okay? And not like goats. So who's going to make this image that is profitable for nothing? He said, Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. Just like the prophets of Baal, they was ashamed. All, all that hollering and screaming, ain't nothing happening, y'all. And the workmen, they are all of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear. Right now, they, hey, they got it going on. They, man, it's a party all day tomorrow, y'all. It's a social club. Everybody got a sense of community, okay? Okay, yeah, all that sense of community till they get to that day when the Lord, when they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together. The smiths with the tongues, both working in the coals and the fashioning with hammers and working in with the strength of his arms. Yet yeah, he is hungry and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches his, his, out his rule. He marked it out with a line. He fitted it with the planes, and he marking it out with the compass and making it after the figure of a man. That's what we're talking about, y'all. And notice, according to the beautiful, to the beauty of a man. That's how I know what that image they throw talking about. That Jesus, no, sir, that is not. That is his great image that they would have put up in people's face, y'all. They don't form the God. That he may remain in the house. So be mindful now. You regard that image as Christ. That's iniquity in the sight of God. Okay? Let me show you. You got people thinking they, they prayers are heard. We're going to find out who actually been answering their prayers too. But look. He heals him down in Cyprus. Uh, no, I'm going to skip that. Uh, verse 17. Make sure I got that right. Uh, verse, yeah, verse 17. Notice. And the residue there, he make it a God. Even his graven image, he falls down to it and worship it and prays unto it. So you got people running around praying unto something so man done made. So how did that God hear in that prayer, y'all? Okay? That's why you must be praying to the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of Israel, in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Now, he said they pray, they and fall it down and worship it and pray unto it and say, Deliver me, for thou art my God. That's why I'm like, uh, anybody praying to the God of Israel around here, y'all? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what about him? Great I am, what about him, y'all? Same one. Anybody? Because you hear people say prayers, but do they mention 
the God of Israel? Hmm. Think about it. But they said to this God that they done made and fallen down to that are my God. But notice what verse 18 said. They have not known nor understood. But he has shut their eyes that they cannot see. Notice how they pray. They pray with their eyes closed. Don't pray with your eyes closed, man. You, no, don't do that. This image, this graven image that they're praying to, they'll shut their eyes that they cannot see. And their hearts that they cannot understand. That's why I saw people, when you talk to them about this word, if they get that little idol, that little image in there, oh, my white Jesus, who's the Savior? They're not hearing you. And you can tell. But they have, their eyes have been shut and their heart that they cannot understand. So you got to, hey, look, Lord, because you the one that's righteous. They the one that's wicked. Pray to the Lord, hey, Lord, can you uh, intercede help that brother out, man, prevent you, uh, he turn to see you. But then that great image you done set up. But that's under the new covenant, y'all. Those of us that receive grace and mercy and faith. Because it can show you what grace intention is. But look, Verse 19, not consider in his heart, neither is the knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burnt a part of it in the fire. Yeah, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? They doing that, y'all, every December 25th. That's how you know. Who dealing with the true God and who not? And the ones that not dealing with the true God, they falling down to the stock of a tree. Notice, he feeded on ashes. That's why you got that Ash Wednesday. He deceived a deceived heart. No, it said a deceived heart had turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? See, that's why you got to be careful. To make sure that your prayer is to the true God. That you pray to the true God. Because this is a sad case to find out that you've been praying to some other God. And like you said, uh, a deceived heart had turned him aside. That he cannot deliver his soul nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand. That's how some people you bring this book to. Just, just show them the word. Don't get mad because they ain't coming. Just do your job. And drive on. Amen. Drive on, y'all. It took me a little growth to figure out, hey, look, it ain't, look, it's not, I'm not the one that should be getting upset. I should be the one saying, hey, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Have mercy on me. Because that person right there, I'm sorry. Hey, I, got, I did my job. Amen. That's all we can do, y'all. That's all we can do. Can't make nobody come and drink this water. You can show them the water. Amen. But you can't make them drink. That's on God's hand, okay? But look, let's go to Job 21 to 7. Look at, closely at these people, y'all. A little bit closer at this. It's all in this book. Believe you me. Job 21, and we're going to start at verse uh, 7. Job 21 and verse 7. Because these people that, can, that don't realize they got a lie in their right hand, watch this, y'all. Job 21, verse 7. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yeah, a mighty in power? Now, how is it that this wicked is mighty in power? We're going to read that in a minute. Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. So they got peace. They got it going on. Hey, man, we don't fear God. Man, fear God, what? No, I love God. I don't need to fear God, all right? And he said, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull generous and faileth not. Their cow cleaveth and casteth not her calf. In other words, everything they're putting their hand to is prospering. They got that, that prosperity box on that my soul may prosper. That's all they think. And then they got that pork chop over there. And they got a Christmas tree in the right hand. Talking about, this is Christ's birthday. It is for Christ, all right? But look, they send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the tambourine, the timbrel, 
and the harp, and they rejoice at the sound of the organ. Dun, 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 dun. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's go tomorrow, take a drive and listen. You want to hear the organ going by in the churches. Oh, so we talk, well, we started out talking about the wicked. Hmm. Think about it. They rejoice at the sound of the organ. But notice what they're doing. They spend their days in wealth. That's why that preacher that sat there and said, I got to have me, what, $16 million for my rear jet, right? Or oh, what, that $64 million? Yeah, he had, yeah it was wow. millions, y'all. He Because he's spending his days in wealth right now. In a moment, go down to the grave. But watch this, y'all. Verse 14. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Mm -hmm. And notice, what is the Almighty that we should serve him, and what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Oh, so you mean that everybody ain't praying to God, and you can tell who is and who not. But what's who, then who are they praying to? Let's go to Luke 4th chapter, y'all. Remember, they have mighty and power and wealth. But it said, what is the prophet that we should pray unto the Almighty? Uh, and what prophet should we have if we pray unto him? Look what Satan said, y'all. Luke 4, chapter. Luke 4 and verse 5. Luke 4, chapter and verse 5. He said, and the devil taking him up, talking about Jesus, into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. Wait a minute. So Satan got the ability to give power? Right. Yes, sir. That's why we read about that. The wicked, but it said, wherefore do the wicked live and become, oh yeah, almighty in power? And they pray too, y'all. They profess that they know God, but guess what? They deny them in the word. Why? Because they doing, they bowing down to the devil. And watch this, y'all. He said, uh, and, and unto them, the devil said to him, and notice, this is talking to the Lord when he was in his flesh. So if Satan going to come after Jesus while he's in the flesh, who are we? Exactly. For him not to come after us. Right. And the wicked take that ticket, they take that carrot, they take that uh, 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 bid, they take that pie, they take that plate, they take that money, okay? Well, look, they take this power, because Satan said unto them, if the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, mm, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. No wonder the wicked is prospering, and like I said, the fear of God ain't upon them, and they book generous, and they have cleavage not. And they send forth their little ones to dance like a flock. Yes, sir. Verse 7, though. Watch this. If thou would therefore worship me, all shall be thine. So they need to they didn't pray to the devil in the church? Yes, sir. Let's go and look at it right quick in Revelations 2. 2 and 12. Satan sees sitting right in the churches and he being prayed to. That's why the wicked can get. Hey, look, man, you know, I know pork chops ain't healthy for you, but I love my pork bacon. I ain't. I know Christmas ain't right. Uh, then why you? Oh, uh, well, you know, it's Christ. It's for the kids. Dude, let the children dance and fight. Think about it. Second uh, chapter of Revelations, you're going to start at verse uh, 12. And, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? These things said he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. So I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Sitting in the churches, yes, sir. That's why they got the tambourine and the organ in there going to. Be. <laughs> they jamming all day tomorrow, rejoicing at the sound of the organ. But Satan's seat is in there, y'all. And notice, and thou holdest fast my name. So now. See, back in the old days when Elijah the prophet, he told him, look, y'all bring all the prophets in ball. All 400 of y'all go. Y'all calling y'all guy a ball. Now, guess what? Say, he said, uh-uh-uh-uh. What we're going to do is we're going to use the name of Jesus to get you to worship ball. Okay? Don't, don't go in the commandments because the commandments kill ball. Okay? That's why we read 
Except your righteousness exceeds that he should teach the commandments and do them. Mm -hmm. Can be called great in the commandments of God. So they don't want you to look at the commandments, because that's taking them out. Because then that means you in the church on today. And now they're in there on tomorrow on, on, ball, on the ball in the name of Jesus, which is actually worshiping and praying to Satan. So now he said, Thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Also, they call themselves what? Christians, y'all. That's why we got a shirt that said, Saved from paganized, the paganized Jesus. For real. He is not playing with that. And anyone that really understands that, they want a shirt. They see that there. Man, I want one of them. Because I see a paganized Jesus all day long that they praying to all day tomorrow, y'all. So they hold fast his name. They call themselves and has not denied my faith. So you know they're praying, y'all. And they call themselves Christians. And notice, even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So this is in the church, y'all. What church? Hmm. Check out that lesson I got called Operation Pergamos. You'll find out what church you're talking about. But look, let's go and uh, Matthew 6 chapter, watch what Jesus said about the heathen and how we should pray. Matthew 6. Matthew 6 chapter. And uh, there's a lot in this piece right here, but I'm going for specific reading to a specific verse. Because watch what Jesus said about how the heathen pray and how we should pray. Matthew 6, and I said verse 7. He said, but when you pray, use not vain repetition. And I'll never forget, I was sitting up in the church. They want me to say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. They want me to say over and over and over again. Till I started looking, sounding like I was speaking in tongues. Over mm. and over and over and over again, y'all. Mm. I thought the Lord said, uh, when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do. Right. Oh, you mean to tell me the heathens pray? Yes, sir. Use a vain repetition. The heathens pray. For they think that they shall be heard for they must speak. So who's actually listening to them? They're praying to Satan, y'all. So that's why the Lord said, I ain't hearing your prayers. So who's listening to their prayers then, y'all? Blessing them and giving them money and all of that. Interesting. Let's go to Matthew 7 right quick. They kind of clear that mystery up. Matthew 7 and 21. Then we had the Hispanic this morning say, Oh, oh, I know, I know about this. They, yet yeah, the Lord don't know them. Man, we wanted the Lord know you. Because <laughs> uh Eureka was different with him. That boy didn't want no piece of his book, really. Anyway, the more she had kept dealing with him. Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes, yes, uh, uh, yes, we, yeah, we see you kind of squinting there, uh, uh, kind of squirming there, like, uh oh, I'm getting my, my uh, peep card getting uh, shred. Yeah, so right here, 21, look what the Lord said, because everybody in praying to the same Jesus, y'all. Because he said, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many were saying to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that name? Have we? And you know they're praying. Anyway, and in that name cast out devils, and you know they're praying. And had and done many wonderful works, and you know they're praying. Guess what? And then when I professed to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Lord said, I don't know you. Then who's that been praying to them? Remember, we read Satan go hold fast in the name of the Lord and has not denied his faith. So they don't call themselves Christians, which we know this is talking about. That's why you must be praying to the true God so that you are not found in this crowd, the workers of iniquity. Because the Lord said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he would not hear me. So now let's go to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8 and 5. Even Paul knew there were many gods, y'all, so we got to be careful about uh, our prayer. Who, who gets our hallelujahs, y'all, and our amens, okay? 1 Corinthians 8 and uh, verse 5. I shall Paul say right here. For though there be uh, that are called gods, notice, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, remember how Baal's prophets 
There's many of them, y'all. Ball had 400 prophets, y'all. Big, huge crowd, rock star crowd. You know, if you take that crowd back to where we were hanging out in First Kings, and you compare it to that crowd that's in there tomorrow, hmm, kind of like the same crowd, huh? That's why Paul said, there be God's many and Lord's many. But notice, but to us, notice Paul said, but to us, there is but one God. Us to us is one God. Mm -hmm. The Father whom are all things, and we in him, and the one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. They form the Father. Notice the Trinity, ain't no Trinity there, y'all. It's God the Father and God the Son. This is who we pray. This is the true God. This is what makes up the family of uh, what's called the true God. But we're going to get there a little bit. We're going to actually read that a little bit. But I want to go here in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Because these people are praying. You got some prayer warriors. But they pray, they're praying in a warrior for who? Hmm. Okay. Okay. They are a prayer and a warrior for who? Now watch this. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For he that come preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been made thoroughly, we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Because guess what, y'all? We worship God in spirit and in truth, y'all. We're not into that uh, 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 ball Jesus or that paganized Jesus. Because that going to lead you to the crowd uh, the Lord said, I never knew you people. But look, let's get down to verse uh, 13. Because now, remember back then with Elijah and the 400 prophets, now Satan got clever. He using the name of the Lord, and he's also to transform themselves. So you got people praying, and they under these ministers right here, y'all. These very ministers. For such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transform themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed to angel light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to the grace. They deceive it. All that prayer, and all that prophecy, and all that hollering and screaming, all that jumping up and down, all that they're doing, they're deceiving themselves. And going to find out at the end of the road, like the Lord said, making long prayers and pretests. They shall receive the greater damnation, y'all. Why is it greater? Because people that are just a regular sinner, they're going to let the fight. But they didn't do it in the name of God. That's what's going to make it greater, y'all. Amen. Think about it. They pray all that prayer, but the Lord goes to I never knew you. Man, that's way worse than, you know, I guess, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, that killed him guy. He didn't call himself a Christian. I don't reckon. Anyway. But the ones that sat up there, that big old false prophet, they had all the people following behind and millions and, and how they say, millions and millions, <laughs> okay, following him. That's going to be a great damnation in the day when the Lord, in that day the Lord tells them, I never knew. That's going to be, whoo! Because we that small, no good crowd. We the one that's in the corner, y'all. We, we swept up under the rug. Oh, don't listen to Brother Jacob. He don't know what he's all right. So watch this, y'all. Let's go in uh, Matthew's 20, uh, uh, 24th chapter. And we're going to see where, who, who this book said is the true God. When we go into Matthew 24 and verse 24 and verses 3 through uh, 3 to 5. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. Remember when we read, it said, A deceived heart had turned them aside. 
Look, y'all, you got to make sure you don't deceive all trying to turn you aside from the true and living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you had prayer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, which is the same as Jacob, guess what? You under a deceived heart. Amen. And he said, take it that no man deceive you. So now, verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now we understand why Satan's seat is in the church. Which church, y'all? The one that ain't got nothing to do with the commandments of God. Think about it, because he said, my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness. My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness. Thy commandments are righteousness. So this is how you protect yourself and you ensure that your prayers are being heard. Because we read off the top, the Lord's ears is open to the prayer of the righteous. But against them that doing evil, his face is against them. So now I want to go and show you. Let's go to uh, 1 John 5 and 19. 1 John 5 and 19. 1 John 5 and 19. And 19. First John 5 and 19. Watch this. And we know that we are of God. Yes, sir. And the whole world lies in wickedness. Yes, sir. Christmas, the whole world swallowed that pig. Sunday worship all day tomorrow. The world believes you're going to go to church on Sunday. The world, y'all. That's the world. That is wickedness. So who they praying to all day tomorrow, y'all? Think about it. Well, you must be praying to the God, the true God. And watch this. Who is this? And we, uh, uh, and we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Notice. And we are in him that is true. Notice, we know him that is true. We know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. We know Jesus didn't sit up there talking about observe Sunday, would you? We know Jesus didn't promise you to go into heaven because that's what they, the wicked is saying all day tomorrow. We know that. There's a whole lot of things, y'all. A whole load of things that let you know him that is true. And that we are in him. That is true. Notice, even his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God. That's what the book just said. And you got people running around saying Jesus ain't God. So that tells you the Lord ain't hearing their prayer. And who is? The devil. Satan. Giving them power so they can flourish and tell everybody and spread their lies. Talking about Jesus ain't God. Okay. Hmm. That's what they're praying to Satan, the devil, y'all. But we just read that Jesus' book said this is the true God and eternal life. Now notice, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. And what, what little children are you talking about? He ain't talking about that little five-year-old, y'all. He's talking about those of us that have been born again by the word of God. Read it. It's in Peter. Born again by the word of God. We are the little children. We keep ourselves from idols. So that Lord will hear our prayers. Because he said, if I regard iniquity, I will not hear your prayer. This is how we understand how to pray to the true God, which is his son, Jesus Christ. Because he said, this is the true God. Because watch what Jesus said. First John, let's go to St. John 14 and 6. St. John 14 chapter. We're going to read verse 6. And then we're going to skip down. St. John 14 chapter and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Think about it. So if you were about the way, which is Jesus, and the truth, that is Jesus, and the life, why wouldn't you hear your prayers? Because he is the true God, y'all. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. So let's get down to verse 13 and continue this. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And this is why we pray to him in truth, spirit, and in truth. That's why God speaketh to him 
seek to be worshipped, and they that worship him must worship, worship, worship him in spirit and in truth. Now let me add this again as we go on this series. We show you why some prayers aren't immediately answered. We're going to go and show you examples of men of God that have made prayers, but God did answer because they weren't in accordance to his plan. God has delayed some prayers, and you have to wait on it. Then God answers. Because sometimes when we want it now, the Lord already knows what's up. He's like, no, you don't need it right now. You need that thing later. When you really need it, that's when the Lord will drop it for you. So that's a part of this series that we go on in this prayer and hope, faith, and truth series. But Jesus said something in the very next verse. Notice. If you love me, keep my commandments. And notice what the Lord said. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive. That's why you want the spirit of truth in your life. And when you get it, it will take you out of the world because the world can't receive it. Amen. And once you come out of the world, which is in wickedness, which the Lord said, my heart is our iniquity. I ain't going to hear you. His prayer against them that doing evil. Now you come into the realm of where the Lord hear you. And your prayers abound in the sight in the heirs of God. So now, um, let me finish that. Uh, Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's how you know the, whole, the things that the whole world is doing, the events like Christmas and what they're talking about, well, what the world is getting ready for tomorrow, Sunday, which is, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth ain't in there. There's another spirit in there. But anyway, uh, I'm going to push on. I'm going to push on. Because uh, first, uh, let's go to Isaiah 45. You know what? I'd rather, I'm going to defer that. And I'm going to go to Acts 10 chapter. Because I'm going to show you someone that was turning from the world and how the Lord dealt with him. Let's go to Acts 10 chapter. Acts 10 chapter. Because you got some very prayerful people out there. Some prayer, what they call prayer warriors. But if you ain't really seeking the Lord, but for ones that are seeking the Lord, this is what the Lord do to them, y'all, right here. Acts 10 chapter. Now, this is a Gentile, the European. He was not tidy. And it's going to tell us what kind of uh, a prayer warrior or devout man this was. And once the Lord saw this thing, he put in a plan, he put in action, a plan to deliver this man. Okay? So right here from that uh, other crowd, y'all, because look what the Lord said here. Had written rather Acts 10 chapter. And this is the history of the church. Acts 10 and uh one. And this is seven years after the day of Pentecost, y'all. After the day the Lord set up the church under the new covenant. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, who gave much alms to the people. And prayed to God always. So now this was a very devout man. He was in the prayer big time, obviously. Because it said he prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day. An angel of God coming in unto him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. Because that's what happened when you were actually experiencing an angel. You scared. You like, man, look. You are afraid. And said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Because look, remember what he had? And he was a devout man and he feared God. Right. Amen. That caused his prayer to come up. So you got to have fear in there. Ones that call it say a prayer without fear. Uh-uh. The Lord wants to see that fear towards him in your prayer. So he said his prayers come up for a memorial. Now look what he said. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who lies with one Simon Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Oh, you mean tell this man still lacks some things, y'all? Out of all his praying, all his devoutness, even his fear of God, he still lacked something? Yes, sir. Yes, he did. Big time. And watch what the Lord going to tell him to do. What the angel going to tell him to do. And when the angel which uh, spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his uh, household servants and devout soldiers of them 
that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So out of all his devoutness and prayer, he still lacked connection to the priesthood of God, the priest of God. Let me put it like that. I'm going to put it as clean or basic as I can put it. He lacked connection to the priest of God, and here it comes. And we had uh, uh, verse 9. On the morning as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and that would have eaten while and but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let, and let down to the earth. Now what God was doing was prepping this man to receive the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles wasn't there on the day of Pentecost, y'all. That's why this is happening. Now watch this. Uh, wearing all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, because the Gentiles are wild, y'all. Believe you me. I don't know if something like one of Israel is even wilder, but now the Gentiles are very wild. That's why I said then wild beasts the creeper things and the fowls of the air. Because it's under the Gentiles that we have obtained the flight, air flight, y'all, jets and planes and all of that, man. Think about it. They always represented the times of the Gentiles because it's in this time we they they, they uh, created a flight, y'all. We are living in times when they, when they created what we see planes in the air, flying in the air. That's why I say they represent, they are represented here by the fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So all the way, this is like seven years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Peter knew Jesus' death and resurrection did not end the dietary law. Amen. Think about it. So what are we actually talking about here? This ain't talking about food, y'all. It's actually talking about people and how God was cleaning up the Gentiles. And right here, watch what he said, verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. But God had cleansed, that call not thou come. This is done thrice, which is three times. And the vessel was seated up again into heaven. Why was it done three times, y'all? We see if three come up again in this passage. Now, while Paul doubted, I'm sorry, Peter doubted in himself what the vision which had, he had seen should mean. Behold, the man which was sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, was, which was surnamed Peter, would lodge there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, wait a minute, it said the angel up there earlier, didn't it? That's right. See, on the way to learn, said, this form of the spirit is an angel, okay? That's appeared in the form of a man, Okay? In this form or this context of the spirit. So the spirit is accurate when it said that unto him. Behold, three men sick thee. You know, so now we understand why it was done twice that this thing came down. Because he had to prepare for three Gentiles. Amen. Okay, giving Paul, giving Peter a clue as to what was coming at him. So now three men seek thee. And arise, therefore, get thee down and go with them, doubt of nothing. But I had sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is this called? Well, you I come. And they said, Cornelius, the satiric, a just man, and one that feared God. Notice this is a prayerful man. He feared God. So the Lord see that he didn't regard iniquity in his heart. That's why the Lord heard his prayer. And he had that other component in our prayer to the true God. Fear. That's part of the component, y'all. That's why he said he feared God. And a good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel. Or we could have said the Holy Spirit or by the Holy Ghost. Okay, because spirit is slain for ghost. Or ghost is slain for spirit, either way. But this is a holy angel that he was warned by to send for thee into his house. And to hear words of thee. So now we see this angel couldn't tell Cornelius what he want, what he needed to know. He had to follow the protocol. The priest, God gave it to the priest, and the priest got which we are, Israel, 
and we teach the people. We tell them our true is away. We ain't telling them about the one on fire, y'all. Because they think can't nobody else be saved but us. If that's the case, why is the Lord going to get an attack? Right. Why is he going to get somebody of another nation if we are to save the other people of the world? We to preach to all people on this planet. That's why we was dealing with Hispanics this morning. Telling us other. We was telling the Hebrew, look, sister, we ain't discriminating nothing. Amen. Okay. You Hispanic, we're going to deal with you. You want to be Korean? We'll deal with you. Look, this here is the protocol that's being revealed in this book. And he's bringing in the stranger. He's bringing in the uncertain side. He's bringing in this guy that was a prayer and had fear in his prayer. And this is what's required when you pray to the true and living God. So now, in verse 23, he said, Then he called them in and lodged with them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from Joppa to company him. And the morrow after that, they entered into the Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and his near friends. He's called other Italians, y'all. And as Peter was coming, and Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now, watch this, y'all, because you got the Hebrews running around talking about making them, oh, the white man go bow down for me. Uh, no, you don't follow. You right. regarding evil. Iniquity in your heart. Now watch what Peter does. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. Yep. You don't have no man bowing before no man. That's idolatry, y'all. That is iniquity. That's wickedness in the sight of God. But here, uh, the flesh bowing before flesh. But he said, Peter took him up and said, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that would come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. That's how that father came out. Well, see, only us physical Israelites, right. we're going to be saved. Look, that's iniquity. That's iniquity talk, y'all. Because this is one of another nation. But Peter had to be shown seven years later after the church was set up that people of other nations are going to come into this thing, y'all. That's why I said to come into one of another nation. But let's look at this. Finish this. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So anyone of another nation who got, who's devout, who has fear, uh, 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 what, devout and fear of God, and work in righteousness, they accept with him. And their, his, their prayers are acceptable, y'all, to God. Amen. And the Lord going to send the Israelite, going to send them by Israel to get it right. That's why he said, uh, 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 let's skip down to verse 33. And immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done, that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. So even though he was a prayerful man and devout, he had to hear what God commanded Israel to do, y'all. He had to hear. He had to bring them into the church. Okay? And then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I wonder if them I see you, I see boys read this. How do you say God is of no respecter of persons, y'all? I'm like, really? And y'all supposed to be united in Christ? What Christ is that? Anyway, but in every nation, man, is this boy read this book? Anyway, but in every nation, he that fears him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. That's right. So if you enter prayer into the true God, this is how you get your prayers heard. Because you work in righteousness and you fear God. He's going to hear your prayers then, y'all. He's going to hear your prayers. So I'm going to go to this one last place. I'm going to see if I got room. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit here and show you how we saw the pray. There's a certain way we supposed to pray. And we're going to go to 1 Kings 8 and 22. We're supposed to pray toward Jerusalem. Now for us, we face the east. Now if we were closer toward the east, then we will face the west. Okay? So it's not a matter of, hey, we only pray to the east. No. It's how it's whatever direction Jerusalem is from where you are. Like if we were staying up in uh 
uh, uh, let's say, like, okay, the United States is Western Jerusalem, but if we stayed up in Germany, then we'd be facing south. If we were down in Saudi Arabia, we'd be facing north. Mm. Okay, if we were over in uh, India, we'd be facing to the west. Okay, so we face Jerusalem is what this is about. And this prayer that Solomon laid out here shows us how we pray toward the true God and keeping his commandments. Isaiah, sorry, 1 Kings 8 and 22. And this is pretty much our last place. 1 Kings 8 and 22. We're going to start there. And uh, we're going to read the answer in 1 Kings 9 chapter. Okay? So, in praying toward the true God, Praying to the true God, he also requires that some, he answered and said something that Solomon prayed and the Lord answered this thing and we're going to see this thing in our prayer. And how and who. So we understand who and we understand how we got, we got to pray in fear and devout to God. And now we're going to look at a portion of how, another aspect of how we pray. Right here, because you have people wondering, why is it that they turn y'all open up? Y'all face to the east. Well, we finna read that answer and ask, read that uh, the answer to that question right now. First Kings 8 and 22. First Kings 8 and 22. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord, and he said, Lord God of Israel. There is no God like thee in heaven, above, or in the earth beneath, who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants, that walk before thee with all their heart. See, those are who the Lord hears, and how we are to approach the Lord. Who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised to him, thou speakest also with thy mouth, and said, and hast fulfilled it in thy hand as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Yes, he will. Behold, the heaven of heavens, and the heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have thou respected to the prayer of thy servant unto his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee today, that thy eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said thy name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken to the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. See, the servant of God is praying toward this place, and this place where Solomon was was in Jerusalem, y'all. That thy eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward this place which thou hast said my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken to the prayer which the serv thy servant shall make toward this place, and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place. Mm -hmm. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place when thou hearest forgive. Yes. This is why we face the east when we pray, y'all. And watch this. We're going to keep going. Now notice. He said, if any man trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and an oath come before thy altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked, to bring his way upon his head, notice, and justifying the righteous, to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before thy the enemy, because they had sinned against thee. See, this is a powerful prayer that, that Solomon dropped, y'all. Amen. And it covered a long period of time, even all the way beyond us this day. Because watch this. Because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee. Notice, he said, they were smitten down before their enemy because they have sinned against you. That's why we fail, y'all. But notice, 
if they shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Notice, when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee and we do, look at our neighborhoods, y'all. Oh my God. I mean, I saw this photograph, y'all. They showed this dilapidated neighborhood with chewed up grass if it's really grass there, you know, normally it's dirt in our neighborhood, y'all. You know, dirt and weeds. Anyway, it said, uh, before Obama and after Obama. I'm like, yeah, and it still look like that to this day, y'all. Israel, we chewed up like that. That's why he said, the rain is shut up, and there's no rain, because we are sinned against thee. And they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them. And we afflicted, y'all. Check out that lesson I got called Black Lives Matter. Or oh, we's afflicted. Big time. Anyway, notice he said, Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou, that thou teach them the good way wherein they shall walk, and get ran upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for inheritance. That's where we headed, y'all. But we're in the land of our enemies right now, y'all. And uh, like I said, we turn toward this place and confess his name and turn from their sin when thou afflicted them. Notice, then hear thou from heaven. Now we're going to read verse 37. And if there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blastings, mildew, locusts, or if there be caterpillars, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, Whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the people of Israel, which shall know any man to pray to his own heart and spread forth his hand toward this house. See, we pray toward our land, y'all. I'm, I'm facing the east. Because we know that our land, our people, we got pestilence all over the place, y'all. Anyway, notice verse 39. Then hear thou in heaven when thou dwell in place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest. But thou knowest, says, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of me, that they may fear thee all the day that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our father. Notice, moreover, Concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel. Yes, sir. Whether you Israel or not. If you are working righteousness and fear the Lord, he talking about you too. Amen. That is not of thy people, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. But they shall hear thy great name, and they do. Man, Jesus is the greatest name among the Gentiles. Oh, my God. They put Jesus all over anything. Okay, they put Jesus on Christmas, Jesus on Easter, Jesus on Sunday, Jesus on going to heaven, Jesus on the law, you know more. They put smear Jesus all over everything, y'all. That's why he said, for they shall hear that great name. And uh, cause how they gonna hear it if they don't speak Hebrew, y'all? Yeah, it's in English. That's why it's, that's why it's great. And of that strong hand, and of that stretched thy arm, when he shall come. And pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, grace and peace in Jesus' name, y'all. Everybody know that. His name is Jesus. That all the people may know his name. To fear thee as do thy people Israel. And that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. And it said, if thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen. The Lord chose the ruler, y'all. We can read that. 
Psalm 132, go in there, start at verse 11. Keep going, you run into it. Which thy chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their call. If they sin against thee, but there is no man that sinneth not, thou and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemies so that they carry them away captive into the land of their enemy far or near. Okay, y'all, y'all know we way from Jerusalem, y'all. We real far. Anyway, yet if they bethink themselves in the land, whether they carry uh, will carry captives and repent. See, that's the other thing. Who gonna pray to God? This God, the one that's repenting. Right. The ones that repented, y'all, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry their captives, saying, We have sinned. That's how Israel, that's how I understand the sin of my forefathers, y'all. We go to Deuteronomy and rather Leviticus and say, You should confess the iniquities, your iniquities, and the iniquity of your forefathers. The Lord will forgive. You gotta remember all of, that's why identity is so important for us, so-called Afro-American, so-called Negroes. Child, please. You ain't none of that, you are Hebrew Israelite. Anyway, and once you understand that, like he said, uh, in the land that we've been carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have done, we have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, right. with all their soul, in the land of their enemies. That's why we keep the feast here too, y'all. Right. right. Yes, sir. Right. Y'all want to hit them boys, sister, we can't keep the uh, feast in the land of our enemies. Child, please. That's the thoughts of iniquity. But he said, in the land of our enemies, which led the captives away and prayed toward their land. That's why it's so important to understand how we are the children of Israel. And pray toward our land, which thou gave us unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer, and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Notice, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgression where they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion. Mm. No, see, I give them compassion, y'all, before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Mm. Think about this is powerful, y'all, and praying to the true God. Amen. For God's people. Hallelujah. Verse 51. For they be thy people and thy inheritance which thou brought it forth out of Egypt from the midst of a furnace of iron that thy eyes may be opened unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them in all that they call for thee unto thee. That's why we gotta pray to the true God, y'all. Not the God of Sunday. Not the God of Christmas. Or Easter eggs and bunny rabbits. Or the God of no laws. No works. Only believe. Right? Book tell us that was believe. But they still on their way to what? To the lake of fire, y'all. Anyway, verse 53. But thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thy inheritance, and thou spake by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou brought us our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Notice, and as it was so, that when Solomon made the end of the pray of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees, and his hands spread upward to heaven, and he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised, that hath not failed one word of all his good promises, which he promised by the hand of his servant Moses. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that we may incline our hearts unto him 
to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judges, which he command our fathers, that these my words, where I had supplication, uh, uh, that these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be now to the Lord our God day and night, that he may that he maintain the call of his servants and the call of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall inquire, require y'all, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. This is the true God. Now let's go to our last place and show you how God uh, responds to this prayer. First Kings 1 and 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he had ple was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. Amen. That's why we pray toward that land. Right now, we face toward the east. Look, you face toward the east when you want the Lord to maintain your cause. Ain't saying you can't face to the south and north. But we that live here in the U.S. of A, we face to the east, y'all. Okay. Okay. Like I said, we live in Germany. We turn to the south. And we down in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. We face north. Probably northeast. Anyway, but notice, the Lord said, I've heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. That means without end, y'all, for irregardless. If some of you see the temple, all the temples that, hey, when it's there perpetually, that's irrelevant on what's there now. Amen. That's what perpetual means, without end, unbreakable. That's why we face our land. Okay? So I hope you got some understanding of praying to the true God. And this is a part of the series of praying in faith, uh, truth, and in hope. Uh, like I said, I can't get it all in one setting. So this is a part of that series. And this part, uh, this concludes the praying to the true God. Lesson for today. Amen. Uh,